What is going on everyone? Today we are talking about how exactly your questing experience will play out in Ashes of Creation and what kind of quests to expect and more. Narrative quests, as you probably know, are story-driven quests within games. Within the world of Vera, you can also expect to partake in these. These are known as your traditional quests in the game, taking you through various story arcs, whether that's a personal, cultural, religious, or other quest line. The big difference with Ashes, though, is each server isn't going to necessarily have the same narrative quests. The lore surrounding the game and the world is the same. This doesn't change. It's set in stone. What happened to each race, the areas of the world, so on and so forth. But due to nodes developing differently on different servers, some of these stories may be available in one server while locked away in another, giving each world its own unique feeling but it's all part of the same story. You just might get a different picture than your friend on a different server got, as the antagonists, NPCs, and actions required may change as you're playing a different part of the story. But if you're jumping into a game later after a server has begun to develop, don't worry on missing out because you will be able to see each server's history before selecting one, so you can jump into the server that feels right for you. There will also be what is known as epic or legendary quests. These quests can affect the narrative of the game and will unlock gated content, although not a lot of detail has been given on these so far. Daily quests in Ashes of Creation will not be what we're used to in most games. They aren't going to make you feel like you're obligated to jump on every single day to complete them or you miss out on some rewards or reputation gains. They will be focused around how the world changes relate to the player's opportunities, and where you're located is going to play a factor in it. Since there is minimal fast travel, you are going to have to weigh into whether or not traveling hours to get to the other side of the map is worth the reward to you. Events in Ashes of Creation are a result of developments in the world. These can take form in a quest that is scaled to fit local, regional, and global needs. These events can drastically affect the world, as events that are considered successful can have positive consequences, while those that are seen as a failure can have negative consequences, such as natural disasters like volcanoes erupting in the world, or a creature bringing eternal winter to the region until taken care of. We can also expect seasonal events and holidays as well to happen through the year, and there is also what is called monster coin events. These events cause hordes of monsters to attack a region based on the world events around. As that erupted volcano that I just mentioned could have forced some dire wolves out of their home and now they're attacking. What is interesting about these events though is that players can take part in the horde side of these events fighting against other players. Although there will be no loot dropping from the monsters that are player controlled and nodes cannot get de-leveled from monster coin invasions but will disable certain buildings and services. Players will become aware of these events in the game through server messages that appear for players in the vicinity of the event. So anyone who wants to partake who is close enough won't miss out. Questing in Ashes of Creation isn't going to hold your hand all the way through it. NPCs that are giving you quests aren't even going to have exclamation marks or question marks over their head telling you where to pick up or turn in these quests. There will be subtle ways that players will acquire knowledge of something needing to be done in the area, and it will be up to you to discover that. So talk to every NPC you see if you're afraid of missing out on something. There will be multiple types of quests based on group sizes as you'd expect, so there will be quests you can solo, quests that you'll need friends to tag along with in a group to complete complete, and even some quests that will require help from members of your guild and be guild specific. You won't find a lot of repetition within progression, Intrepid is trying to avoid grinding quests, and you won't find yourself stuck in some repetitive quest line that runs you through a single dungeon to obtain some gear. They want you to feel as a player that there are more things to do in the game than you have time to. What are your thoughts on questing in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments, and if you are one of the many players who is new to Ashes and want to jump in on the forums or just purchase some cosmetic bundles for the game, well, feel free to use my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications as you stay tuned for a lot more to come.